Raw and real moment from time to time, but when I watched that video of Roquan Smith reacting in real time to finding out that Robert Quinn, his teammate, has been traded to the Eagles from the media during a press conference, I, I know there's a lot of moving parts in a football season on a football team. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just like uh, there, there's a rhythm. There's there's a lot of stuff happening. They got a lot of crap going on. But boy, I'd like to think that there's a way to make sure that Roquan Smith knows about the trade before he even goes out there. Yeah, I you know. know. Maybe it was just dumb luck that it happened the way it did. I, 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 yeah, right. I, it, 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 we're fascinated by moments like that because they're so rare. But as I see them, I think, you know, if we are going to mean what we say about the mental health of athletes and anyone and everyone, like, why do we want to have moments like that captured for the world to see? So it it was real. It was raw. But I can't help but think in some way it's it's avoidable for Roquan Smith to find out there that Robert Quinn has been traded. But that is the headline. Yeah. Robert Quinn. Right. Traded abruptly and out of the blue to the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday afternoon for a fourth-round pick. Plus, I saw a report that the Bears are picking up like $7 million of what he's left to make this year as part of this trade. Yeah, well, it, it's it's um, one, I mean, it, it's the human aspect, you know, and, and, you know, hopefully that type of stuff helps people with mental health. You know, they, they see that, hey, there's a big, tough, macho guy that's, you know, got millions of dollars and he's okay getting emotional in front of people or sharing his feelings. No, that that's where, and and you know, Mike, yeah, it's it's not always easy to. Who knows? That trade was probably went down right there to where they couldn't even get it down there in time to tell him or or you know let it know that it had become official. So that does happen. It's un, it's unfortunate. It shows you the bond that goes in the, in a you know NFL locker room. That is the you know when you get cut from a football team, yeah, you're disappointed for yourself. But the thing that I found myself emotional about both times I got cut from a football team was just that, damn, I'm I'm not going to see some of those guys again or for a long time. And I've been seeing them every day for an extended period of time. And when then when it's a, you're a young player and you play under a you know what they would call in the the locker room an old head, right? He's an old head. Hey, one of the old heads, and one of the old heads in Robert Quinn is you know a, been a baller and a guy that's been a pro bowler and been towards the top of the you know single season sack you know performance in, in certain years and all that. It, it it hits home. It does. And I was surprised too. The Bears, I mean, the way they're playing as of late, you look at it and go, they're kind of close. They like, they might be able to make themselves into something, some sort of ugly playoff team here. That's where I was a little surprised at first, and then also just surprised in the fact that, damn, the all-star team in Philadelphia continues to grow. So it was really amazing. I mean, it's amazing. It is. You know, I think the Bears have some young talent that they're comfortable with that they want to let them play. And the Eagles are going, wait, we're a Super Bowl team. And maybe the only weakness we have is that our front four, just when they rush themselves, is not scary. And now they become scary and more versatile and have greater depth and, you know, just unbelievable job by the Eagles in their front office. Quinn's been around since 2011. He was drafted by the Rams. In his third season, he had 19 sacks, yeah. all pro and obviously a pro bowler. Last year, he set the Bears franchise record. And when you think about Richard Dent, right? 18 and a half sacks for Quinn last year, the most that any Bears player's ever had in a full season. He played 16 games. I know it was the first 17 game season. He played 16 games, missed one. This year, one sack in seven games. I can't help but think that this isn't the Bears becoming trade deadline sellers because it does take some of the air out of the balloon of what they did on Monday night to the Patriots. Like, hey, they're just starting to find their groove. Why are they moving on from this guy? Well, there's a significant salary commitment this year, next year. I think they knew they were going to cut him after this year and not pay him what he was due to make. So let's get something for him now. We can get a fourth-round pick for him now. We can save some of the money that we're due to pay him anyway that we can't avoid now. Let's go ahead and get value uh, and move him to the Eagles. Let the Eagles worry about the cap yeah, charge right. and the cash 
next year and the year after that. They're the ones who have to try to convince him to take less. And if they can't, they're going to have to cut him. Yeah. No, I, I, Mike, I think that's exactly the, the – there, there was talk in the off seasons about would they maybe trade Robert Quinn. Would there, you know, so the, the, that I think is a very real part of this conversation. They realize, again, that you know they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. They're going to continue to fight. They're making moves to set themselves up for next year spending and getting some splash type players on there. We've had that conversation a few times the last, you know, few weeks. They're paying people that aren't even on the team still right now. So, you know, I think it does go a long way to that, let alone they know, yes, there's some young guys coming up the ranks that they like, especially number ninety one, Dominique Robinson. He's a really damn good football player. And then, yeah, the Eagles are going, wait, this this can make sense for us. You're still good. You don't have to play every snap of the game. We got a lot of depth, so you can be fresh and fly around. And it sets up to, hey, you have a good year and you finish strong here. You know, I don't know. Maybe we pay you your what you're supposed to make. But more than likely, you know, we'll try to work something out where you t- make a little less and you'll want to be here because we're a winner and you got a chance to go to the Super Bowl and do all that. They're going to be able to sell that. But damn, between him, Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis on third downs, or now it's Quinn, you know, Quinn, Hassan Reddick, and then Josh Sweat and Brandon Graham inside when they want to do that on, on, on third down. I mean, they got so many different ways, you know, depending on who they play in the situation to where they can line up different guys and be a real pain in the ass on the defensive line. So uh, just – uh, it's amazing what the the Eagles have done here, you know, over the last year to improve their football team. First thing I thought of when they did this deal was the 2017 Eagles, who yeah. won the Super Bowl, right. who had eight guys that they would rotate in and out all game long. Yeah, you talk about how defensive lines are overpowering offensive lines in today's NFL. I mean, the ideal offensive line is five guys who are on the field every week, all the time with maybe a swing tackle who comes in just from time to time yeah. to spell. One, but it's the same starters. It's the same crew. It's the same. The best defensive line is this revolving door of badasses who will just come out there and wear you down. And they're always fresh. And they're always ready to go. And they're always hungry. And they are going to come after you all game long. That was one of the reasons why the Eagles won the Super Bowl in 2017 with all the guys they had. And they still have two of them there in Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham. The other names have changed. But this is the idea, I think. Overpower opposing offensive lines with just the raw number of talented pass rushers who you can keep deploying over and over and over again. That's right. I mean, I think when we look at a lot of you know teams that have played through their defense, that's the one thing they've had in common. Talent and depth to send waves at you. Whether it was the 20, you know, 13 Seattle Seahawks, the 2015 Broncos, that Eagles team you're talking about there, you know, the Steelers teams of some of the 2000s, the Giants that upset the Patriots, they all had that in common. Not only was it talent, you went, wait, when the starting four come out, the next four that come in are, they're freaking good too. Like, it's not like we can just go, oh, Let's take, you know, we, we got a little rest period here. And, and that's where, you know, that's what's amazing about the Eagles, let alone this isn't necessarily a team that we're just going, wait, it's like the Broncos or the Seahawks where we're going they're playing through the defense. The offense is amazing too. That's where it's, it's amazing, you know, and, and I look at it and just go, this is a great move. Not only, I mean, we know what makes them better, but I also thought it's like, Man, you know, in the NFC, we're still waiting to see who who's really good in the NFC. I mean, again, we know Philly's really good. I think you and I both question the Giants and the Vikings and how great it really is. You know, I think we look at Philly and Dallas and the 49ers as maybe being a team. But I also look at Philly with this move and go, you know where this is going to help them? If they do get to that big game in Arizona in the Super Bowl and it's Mahomes and Josh Allen, you can't make a living blitzing those two. You're going to lose if you have to do that too much. And that's where it'll come in handy, too. This is, you know, really a big move and, and a big Super Bowl type of move by the Eagles. This is the kind of F them picks, icing on the cake, cherry on top move that a good team has to be willing to make if the opportunity arises. This is a luxury move by the Eagles. It's reminiscent of what the Rams did last year in getting Von Miller. 
Not that Robert Quinn and Von Miller are in the same stratosphere right now, but Quinn did have 18 and a half sacks. That, last I was going to say they're not that. It's not yeah. that crazy and far off. Don't yeah. be the, the yeah. stats this year are a little misleading. He's come on here the last few weeks. He can still oh. get off the ball and turn the corner, and he was a pain when, in the when, butt the other night. We saw that. Hey. The, the first photo that came up on our Getty Images service was him on the back of Mac Jones. Right. He was, Even though he didn't get a sack yes. the other night. Yeah, you can, you can affect the play. Sacks are misleading because you get close a lot of times, and it's the act of getting close that creates the havoc. Just ask Tom Brady. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that is it. And, you know, that's where it can be misleading. And, you know, again, a lot of teams with the Bears, because the Bears' offense hasn't been very good, they play conservative, too, on the offensive side of the ball. So it, it doesn't lend teams to, you know, dropping back 45 times a game. Uh, no teams had to be in a shootout against them, you know, here at all this year or anything like that. So that affects it, too. Uh, let alone it's, it's a new defense and a new system. There's a few things that are different there. But Quinn, no question, is going to be able to add value to that defense for sure. And uh, it's Howie Roseman, again, just has a, an incredible touch right now with the roster. Yeah, when are the Bears ever going to have the kind of lead that allows a defense to, as Tee they off. say, pin the ears back? Right, pin right. the ears back makes no sense because you're wearing a helmet. Your ears are naturally pinned back <laughs> all the time. Like I never understood that one, but that's the, the word that gets used, the phrase that gets employed when you're in a position where you know the other side is going to pass. There's no guessing, run or pass. Yes, right. It's just go get the quarterback, right. go get the quarterback, go get the quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.